Now welcome to another Let's Watch Some Star Wars, where this time we're going deep into the seventh episode of The Acolyte. I'm going to fire up the episode again. I've already watched it once, of course. But I'm going to watch it again, pause every so often, put up a screenshot and kind of get you up to speed on what is happening in case you're someone who maybe isn't watching the show but wants to know the story anyway. I'll also be telling you what I think, good or bad, I'll maybe throw some theories out there, or just try to kind of make sense of it because, well, this isn't exactly the best written show ever. Alright, so buckle up, no more preamble here, we're just going to jump right in. And this episode begins 16 years in the past, we're back on Brendock, that is the planet from episode 3 with the witches. We are now going to see the Jedi point of view of the events of that night what led to all the witches dying, and what led to Mei eventually being taken away by the Sith, and Osha being taken by the Jedi, and how we get to the present tense of the story. So anyway, the Jedi are looking for something. They are using what appear to be metal detectors. They are taking plant samples. They are taking rock samples. They seem to be just testing everything around them. And it turns out they are looking for a Virgins in the Force, which you may remember hearing in Episode 1. Anakin was a Virgins in the Force, or created, or one was centered around him. But here it turns out that 100 years ago this planet was lifeless, but then there was a great hyperspace disaster. That is basically what the first phase of the High Republic era is about, or how it kicks off, I should say. There's a giant explosion in space, and debris rains across the whole galaxy. Anyway, it turns out this planet has, in the last hundred years, kind of sprouted life. So the Jedi are interested in trying to figure out why, and they think it may be a virgins that has caused it. And apparently they are going to look for it with uh, metal detectors instead of, I don't know, if you're looking for a virgins in the Force. And a virgins gets described as a concentration of Force energy centered around a location. That is how Master Indara describes it. But if that's what you're looking for, why aren't you using the Force to find it? Why are you taking samples and kind of going about it this way? I mean, maybe you tried initially. They have been here seven weeks looking for it. And of course, Torben, the apprentice of Master Andara, he is kind of getting tired of being here. That is a big plot point, actually. He uh, wants to go home to Coruscant. And what's kind of hilarious is uh, in this first scene, they have a little meeting. They're, they're around the fire at night. And Torben is kind of complaining, oh, I'm sick and tired of being here. I want to go home. What are we even doing here? And they finally tell him after seven weeks that we're looking for a virgins in the force. This is the first time they tell him. He has no idea what they are doing here or looking for. They finally tell him after seven weeks. And it's just like, who writes this stuff? You honestly think this kid would have been here seven weeks testing the plants and not been like, hey, anybody going to tell me what we're looking for? But anyway, even after finding out what it is, Torben doesn't care. He still wants to go home. We then see Sol and Indara kind of have a little conversation about how you should train a Padawan. Sol doesn't think he's uh, exactly doing a great job. But then Indara is like, well, you don't even have a Padawan. You know, let me handle this. I know what I'm doing. And you not understanding it is why you don't have a Padawan. And now that I've seen the episode once, I can't help but chuckle at Indara because it's like your Padawan and the fact that he is so bored he wants to go home is the very reason why this mission will fail and why everything goes to hell. They then decide to split up and keep looking, and this just feels so strange. I don't know how they think they're just going to stumble upon the source of the Virgins by kind of trying to cover the planet by square mile, if you will. Like, we're going to search this section, then we're going to search this section. We don't know how big Brendock is, but it's a planet. I'm going to assume it's huge, and that uh, this approach to looking for the Virgins is going to take a very, very, very long time. Either way, they split up and Sol goes off into the woods and that is when he finds Mei and Osha. This is kind of his view from that third episode where we see Mei and Osha playing with the butterfly bird creatures and talking about how we're two, but we're actually one, their little nursery rhyme thing. But anyway, I think I just found the virgins for the Jedi. I think it has to be this tree, the Bunta tree or Banta tree, whatever it was called. And mainly I think that because in the third episode after May falls, she seems to respawn at the tree. It's like the Virgins is the tree and it just kind of remade her or something or brought her back to life. I don't know how else she would have survived the fall. But anyway, yeah, pretty sure the tree is going to end up being the Virgins in the Force. And maybe if they had just kind of meditated on it, the Force would have let them there seven weeks ago. After that then, Sol then follows Coral and the twins back to the fortress. He kind of scales the wall and spies on them a little bit. 
and all of this after he tries to contact Master and Dara, but the comms, of course, don't work. So he is kind of spying on them. He is the one who ends up in the uh, reactor room. If you remember in the third episode, the witches kind of sense something, and they go check out the reactor room. Well, it turns out it was just Soul. I was kind of hoping it would be something cooler. I was kind of hoping that Kamir would be a part of this episode, that he was actually here kind of undermining both sides. I think that would be really interesting. And I suppose that could still turn up to be the case next week. We could get like his side of the story and how and why he was there, but something tells me that's not going to happen. Anyway, Sol was the one in the reactor room. He also kind of oversees them at the dark pit doing some sort of ritual. And so we are supposed to assume he's kind of seeing them from the way wrong perspective. He just sees them as purely dark side users. Even when he's in the reactor room, he sees Mother Anisea kind of training the twins. She force pushes them and tells them, be ready for your enemy and all that sort of thing. So we're supposed to think that Sol is kind of getting the wrong impression. He's getting a worse impression than he should, which is then why he maybe kind of overreacts and says, we have to save the twins. They're in so much danger. Even though, yeah, they are in danger. This is a dark side witch cult and they are going to try to do some sort of ritual to make them their leaders and all that. So he's not entirely wrong, but the show wants us to think that he's wrong about them, even though he's right. I think I got that straight. Alright, so then Sol goes back to base and tells Indara, hey, there's like a cult of witches here. And Torben's like, Night Sisters? There's Night Sisters here? Cool, I gotta say Night Sisters because people know the word Night Sisters in Star Wars. Sol is then like, we have to go save the girls. There's some sort of dark side ritual tonight. And Dara looks at the moons as if she uh, senses something from them. I don't know. But Sol is like, we gotta go, or at least, hey, just trust me and let's go check this out. We can just go talk to them. And finally, Indara is like, fine, even though she wants to contact the council first. And I think this would have been better if Sol was like, hey, the will of the force is telling me that we should do this or that we need to help these twins, but they never mention anything about the will of the force. So I don't know if this is just Sol really wanting to protect the children because, or because it is actually the force kind of telling him this is what he is supposed to do. Either way, they go to the witch's fortress, they break in, take the elevator up, and then we kind of get the same scene from episode three, the whole discussion between them that, hey, we are here to test your twins, we have every right to do it with your permission, whatever that means. The only real difference here is we get to see what happens to Torben. We go into Torben's mind and it turns out Mother Anisea has kind of entered it and is telling him, like, I know what you want. I know what your deepest desires are. I can give them to you. I know you want to go home. All you have to do is kneel before me. And so he does because he wants to go home. He is willing to submit to the dark side because he wants to go home. And I'm not really sure what Mother Anisea is trying to accomplish here, what her actual intent is. Does she just want to see into his head because she's curious as to why the Jedi are actually here? And he was the easy target, she could get into his head and see what their intent was? Or is there something more nefarious? Does she actually want him to kind of act out and do something stupid? Does she want him to kind of make a scene so they have a reason to retaliate? I don't know, I don't really know what she is trying to accomplish, but we do know what ultimately happens, and that is that, well, all the witches are pretty much going to end up dead. We're then back on the Jedi ship, and Indara is like, good idea, suggesting we test the twins, that'll buy us some time, I can now contact the Jedi Council and see what they think we should do. And Sol was like, that really wasn't my intent, I actually think I should be training Osha. He does here kind of imply it is the will of the Force, he does say, I feel like I'm meant to train Osha. And she is all like, I think you're getting way too attached to her. Don't confuse what you want with what she wants, even though she said she wanted to be a Jedi. Osha has already said she wants to be a Jedi and seems very interested in it. Sol is also worried if they wait too long, what will happen to Osha because Mei has been marked with dark side magic, essentially. It's then the next day and the twins come for their test. Much of this is kind of how it was in the third episode, only it's more from May's perspective than Osha's, or more about May's testing than Osha's. We see how May is trying to intentionally fail the test. Indara takes a bit of a different approach, tries to be really nice to her, tries to compliment her and say, hey, I really like that little marking on your forehead. What is it all about? What was that ceremony you were doing last night? And May, of course, falls for it and tells her it was the Ascension and that eventually Osha and May are going to lead the coven. 
She talks about how everyone must walk through fear, everyone must be sacrificed to fulfill their destiny. Which, I don't know if that is supposed to mean Mother Anasea kind of knows what is about to happen, that they're all going to die except for Osha and May. Even though when that scene does come around, she's like, I was going to let Osha go with you anyway, so you've just kind of ruined that. That I had decided to let her leave, and if that had happened, everything would have ended, I think, kind of peacefully. No need for anybody to sacrifice themselves. So I don't know what this line is supposed to mean. I think it is just supposed to make you think. I don't know that it actually has any basis for anything, if you get what I'm saying. It's just there to kind of throw you off and make you wonder what the heck is going on when it doesn't make sense in relation to what we later see. Later that night then, we find out the council has said no to training Osha, that they won't sanction taking her away from the witches, that they've already interfered too much. Which to me sounds like the Jedi don't really care about the witches doing their thing on this planet. I don't know where this idea comes from that we heard before the series even started from Leslie Headland that the Jedi were kind of trying to control the Force, that they wouldn't let others use it, when it seems like they're like, yeah, just leave those witches alone and get out of there already. It doesn't seem like they care or have this uh, monopoly of the Force or like they want to control people or tell people how to use it or... Again, any of the things we heard about before the series began, if this is supposed to make a point about that, it is making it extremely poorly. Anyway, also during this, the blood test results come back. I guess in 100 years they will have better tests that uh, come back instantly, as we've seen in episode 1, where Anakin's blood test was pretty instantaneous. But anyway, it seems that the twins have a very high midi-chlorian count, uh, high enough to be a Jedi. Their symbionts are also exactly the same, which means that they had to be artificially created, and the only way to create something that powerful would be to use a virgins to split one consciousness into two bodies. And so when Torben hears that, he hears, oh, this is proof of a virgins. If I go get the twins, we get to go home, because that makes completely logical sense. And so he just takes off. The Jedi don't really try to stop him in the moment. You know, they do have force powers. They could have done something to try to physically restrain him, I think. If he is literally going to kidnap the twins, you would really think they would try to stop him right there and then. Next, we're back with the witches, and it's basically the scene straight out of Episode 3 where Osha is like, Hey, I, I really want to go be a Jedi. This is my choice. This is what I want to do. And Mother Anasea is sad, but she ultimately says, You know, we'll take that under consideration and then she tries to go tell everyone else that I'm going to let Osha go be a Jedi. And they're all like, no, you can't do that. This is stupid. She's our future. You're our leader. You have to make the right call. But she's like, I'm also a mother. And right now I choose to be a mother. And yeah, I can kind of get behind that sentiment, I suppose. It's got to be hard to be a mother and a leader at the same time. But anyway, Mother Coral is all like, uh, no, we're not letting this happen. She goes to May and tries to get her all riled up and, like, attacks her in a way and says, get angry, get pissed off, and then stop your sister from leaving. And May is running around, like, beating the control panel to stop uh, the lift from going back up and letting the Jedi back in, even though they're outside just scaling the walls. Soul has gone after Torbin, and when he gets there, when they both get to the fortress, Soul is like, yeah, let's just scale this thing and go in there and get the twins. I know I was supposed to come here and stop you, but I'm just going to do that anyway, because, well, this is what the Force wants me to do, and I can kind of get behind that too. He feels like this is what the Force is guiding him to do. He feels like this is the will of the Force. He is trying to protect children from being indoctrinated into a dark side cult. After that, Coral, who got May all worked up and angry and evil, she is now getting the other witches ready for battle because the Jedi have shown up. We then get the uh, fire scene again. We get that scene where May takes the book away from Osha or the drawing of the Jedi symbol, gets all mad and lights it on fire, and then drops the book along with the uh, lantern thing, whatever you want to call it. And she drops them and everything kind of starts on fire, which I, I guess actually does make a little sense. I know it's silly to think that stone would start on fire, but there is a liquid of some kind burning in the lantern thing. And you can actually see it on the floor spreading and spreading the fire. And it's not like the whole building goes up. What actually happens here is the fire will hit the electrical outlet, basically, or the panel. And that will kind of, I don't know, this is the part where maybe it gets a little silly. But that will kind of cause the whole reactor to blow up. Again, not so much of a problem with the stone being on fire because that fire doesn't really spread and uh, 
consume the whole stone fortress. More of an issue with the fact that it would kind of uh, cause an electrical fire that would blow up the whole reactor. Also, I think it's worth noting there is no real twist with the fire. It was May who started it and kind of at the behest of Coral. Again, she was the one that got May all worked up. But there is no big twist here, which is one of my biggest problems with the episode. Nothing here is uh, unexpected. It's kind of happening how we saw it in the third episode. We're just having the details filled in. I could have predicted all of this. I saw this all coming. I even saw the end with how Soul can only save May or Osha, but we'll get into that in a bit. So yeah, it's like we're watching the third episode again, but we're getting a little bit more detail, but that's it. Nothing is like changing my perception of that night, really. We waited the entire season. Six episodes have built to this, and that is a, that's a big letdown. This is just kind of like, yeah, that's kind of how I thought this would all play out. But anyway, from here on out is where things really kind of go off the rails for me because Sol and Torbin show up and they confront Mother Anisea and Coral. And the first thing Anisea should say is, we have decided to let you take Osha. That is all. Take her. Go. Leave May. Don't ask questions. Get the hell out of here. And I think Sol, who is feeling like he is here to save Osha, I think he would accept those terms and everybody lives happily ever after. Instead, Mother Anisea is like, you've come here to know what my decision is. She says that instead of just saying her decision. And Sol is like, how did you make the twins? Where are they from? And she's like, someday those noble intentions you have will destroy every Jedi in the galaxy. This is just people being stupid because of bad writing, I feel like. Because first of all, sure, from Mother Anisea's point of view, if she somehow knows the future, she knows about the Clone Wars and the coming of Sidious, or maybe she just knows about the Sith and their uh, goal to destroy the Jedi, she could certainly feel that way. She could certainly feel like, hey, you guys are so good that someday you're going to get what you deserve. But in all reality, that is not what happens to the Jedi. The Jedi do not lose because of noble intentions. They lose because of a Sith Lord. They lose because Palpatine had one hell of a plan, and he executed it pretty well. You know, unlike how this show is being executed. But anyway, after her comment about the destruction of the Jedi, Torben kind of treats that like a threat. He gets all angry, like, I'm going to pull my lightsaber. Sol stops him, and it's at that moment that May comes running out yelling, Fire! Fire! And Sol then says, Osha! Which I guess explains why he didn't know the difference between May and Osha. And I'm talking about the previous episode where May pretends to be Osha and gets on the ship and fools Sol for the whole episode. I guess that explains that, along with them being the same symbiont, that they are the exact same person, so Sol just can't tell the difference between them or something. Anyway, that is when we enter bullet time, and uh, Coral sees how distraught May is, that May is saying, help me, so she pulls her weapon or starts to swing her weapon. Torbin pulls out his lightsaber, activates it, and that is when uh, Mother Anisea decides to turn into the smoke monster. She starts to turn into some kind of mist creature looking thing. And as she's doing that, she starts to do something to May that is turning her into a smoke creature too. And so this is the point where Sol has to decide. And keep in mind, he thinks this is Osha. He thinks this is the one he is here to save. And he's watching her being vaporized or something. So he reacts and he stabs Mother Anisea with a lightsaber. And she dies, which is a good thing. It's good that... Uh, Lightsabers can kill smoke monsters, but can't kill Sabine. But anyway, Mother Anisea is dying, and what she says to Sol with her final breath basically is, I was going to let you take the child. I was going to let you take Osha. And it's like, maybe open with that next time. Maybe say that first, and maybe you're not dead, and maybe all the witches aren't about to die, and maybe poor Torben doesn't have to kill himself in the future. Maybe you really should have spoken up and said something and saved your whole coven and given Osha what she wanted and saved May from becoming an acolyte of the Sith. And again, maybe you saved poor Torben from killing himself because I guess he feels guilty about all of this. And speaking of feeling guilty, in the moment Sol feels very guilty about what he has done and so Coral is all angry and she attacks Sol and he doesn't really fight back because again he is feeling guilty, he's feeling like he screwed up. And she gets all angry at him and screams to fight me, but he's like, nah, I ain't gonna fight ya. 
And I kind of like this. I do think Sol would kind of be in a, a moment of reflection here, right? He would really be like, wow, did I screw up? Or what should I do here? And so he's just kind of getting beat up by her. May has also seen a soul kill her mother. And she's, of course, pissed. She gives a look to Sol like, I'm going to get you and your three friends someday. Which makes sense. It would make sense that May would be very angry at these four. I get that. No problem with that being May's motivation. Anyway, Coral is beating the crap out of Sol, all the while Torbin is deflecting some arrows from the other Night Sisters, and then there are some explosions. The fortress is blowing up, probably because of that electrical fire, and this kind of snaps Sol out of it, and he's like, hey, we gotta find the twins, I gotta complete my mission, I gotta do what the Force has kind of willed me to do here, right? But Coral is like, hey, I can go smoke form two, and she kind of transforms. It's then that Torbin notices that the archers have also disappeared. And I guess we're supposed to assume gone smoke form. We then also see the witches who have gathered inside. They are all kind of chanting. They have dark eyes. And I guess they're all kind of focusing on the same spell. This, I'm guessing, is the power of many. And what they're using that power to do is to possess the mind of Kelnaka. He is going to attack Sol and uh, Torbin. A big, cool-looking fight then happens with the Wookiee. A lot of people were upset we didn't see any uh, Wookiee action before. Well, we get it here, and it's fine. It's good. He's kind of big and lumbering around and swinging a lightsaber, and it's it's fine. He almost kills Torbin, but of course we know he can't kill Torbin. Torbin is uh, going to kill himself later on. Sol then starts to get the crap beat out of him, and he is being choked. He is close to dying, I would assume. And that is, of course, when Indara shows up and takes Kelnaka down and starts to probe into his mind and tries to get the witches out. And when she does get the witches out, they seem to all die? I'm not really sure why that happened, or if Indara knew that was going to happen. Was she in there, like, killing the witches? Like, was she aware of what was going to happen or not? Very curious about that one, but either way, it seems like all the witches die that were uh, chanting and focusing in the other room. We don't know what happened to Mother Coral or the archers who may have also went smoke form. I am going to assume Mother Coral in particular survived. Either way, Indara tells Sol to go save the twins, so he goes and runs off, and this is, of course, kind of the opposite view from episode 3, where we see the two twins at the end of the bridge together, and where Sol can only save one of them. Well, it turns out that he could have, I think, saved both of them. He runs in there just as the two sides of the catwalk are collapsing, and he decides to hold up both sides of the bridge. And he's just holding it there. He doesn't like, you know, tell them to run off the catwalk or get off the bridge before it falls. He also decides to hold it up instead of just holding up both twins. I think I would have just let the catwalk fall and I would have taken hold of the twins and tried to float them over to somewhere safe. Seems easier than uh, holding up the whole kind of bridge. I don't know, I guess heat of the moment, he didn't really think of that, but uh, you really think he would have, but yeah, it's one of those things you gotta let slide for the sake of the story, I, uh, I guess. But anyway, he of course chooses to save Osha. I think this was supposed to be like the big moment of the episode, like you see Sol could only save one and he picks to save Osha. But why wouldn't he have picked Osha? Why is this like a shocking reveal that he picked her? She is the one that wants to be a Jedi. She is the one that the Force is telling him to train, or that he was here to find and save. The other one has even been touched by dark side magic and wants to lead the cult. So it's a pretty obvious choice. It's not a hard choice for Soul to make. I mean, it's hard for him to have to choose. Sure, he doesn't want me to die, I'm not saying that. But if you gotta pick one, the choice is a pretty easy one to make, I think. The final scene of the episode is then them back on the Jedi shuttle. They are going home, back to Coruscant. Torbin finally gets to go home, and they are deciding what to tell the Jedi Council about what happened. Sol wants to tell them the truth. He wants to tell them everything. But it's Indara who's like, no, we can't do that. You can't do that to this little girl. Because I guess if you tell the Council the truth, they won't allow Osha to be trained. But if they lie, Osha will be allowed to be trained, even though the circumstances really don't change anything about Osha, necessarily. She still lost her whole family. She is still technically too old and has formed a lot of attachments. Whether or not it was the Jedi's fault or somebody else's fault that all the witches died, yeah, I mean, it's kind of important, don't get me wrong, I could understand Osha being upset at the Jedi. 
but I don't know why one way is like, well, Osha will be trained and one way Osha won't be trained. I don't know why what Sol and Torben did would impact what Osha's future would be with the Jedi Order, if that makes sense. But anyway, they decide to lie via omission. They decide not to tell the council the full details. They just say that uh, May started a fire and uh, bad things happened. And then Sol basically says to Osha that, yep, you are going back to Coruscant to be trained as a Jedi VN. So anyway, to close this out, I didn't think this was a horrible episode if you take it out of the context of the show. Or if this were, say, the very first episode of the season. If this episode and episode 3 were the beginning of the season. And yeah, I talked about this in my overall review last night. But if this were how the show had started out, I don't think it's that bad. I don't know that it's fantastic. I don't know that I find this gripping television. But certainly it's better to get it at the beginning to set this or for this to be the kind of framework of a season rather than this being the culmination of a season of a mystery that really wasn't much of a mystery after all. Like I was saying before, I don't think anything really shocked me in this episode. I wasn't surprised by anything. I more or less figured this is how events played out unless there was a twist that we weren't seeing, like a Sith being there and kind of undermining both sides and causing the conflict because he maybe wanted to get the twins and he wanted everybody to die and or he wanted to kind of be able to blame it on the Jedi or show them in a negative light for them to get some bad press, which is what Vanestra Rowe seems to be worried about. So yeah, out of context, in isolation, or at the start of the season, maybe this is a pretty solid episode. But here at the end, this being what we waited for, it just feels like a dud. It feels like a letdown. It feels like the whole point of the season or the series thus far was to get to this episode, which should have been how it all started because it really doesn't do anything for you. Again, this might be the interesting start of something, but the culmination of something, it just doesn't work. And I am kind of curious, though not necessarily in a good way, but I am curious how they uh, finish up the season next week. I feel like there's a lot of things they could touch on, and yet nothing at all that really needs to be touched on, if that makes sense. This could have been the end of the season, you could have taken out all the Khmer stuff, and I would have been like, yeah, I, I, I guess this was a story. I don't know, I just thought this was all very poorly written, the series on the whole so far, very poorly constructed, you could say, that the mystery itself is not well done, it is not interesting, and when you get the payoff, you feel like you've been uh, let down. But I guess we still have to wait to see how it will all actually end next week. But for now, that's all I got for you this time. Now it is your turn, take to the comments below, tell me what you thought about this episode, are you excited for the finale, and what do you think will happen in the finale? Will we maybe get more from that night that will maybe change or alter our perception yet? Because, again, things are pretty straightforward right now. But whatever you think, whatever the case might be, leave a comment below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.